In previous session, we showed that the Bezier function has an orthogonality property. Now, we want to prove that the Bezier function has a normalization constant. And this normalization constant is equal to half j prime b squared of a. Of course, here if a equal b. As we said before, a and b are chosen to be the zeros of Bezier function jp of ax and jp of bx, respectively. We're going to go through the solution in a similar manner to that of uh, the orthogonality proof where we we rewrote the the differential equation of Bezier function in this way and then we replaced x by ax and we have shown that the differential first and second derivative do not change uh, while here this one uh, is going to change However, we're going to repeat the same steps as we did in the orthogonality proof and we ended up with this equation. Now, by integrating the last equation, equation 3, from 0 to 1, we got equation 4 and at this step, we have to choose the concept behind the normalization where A equal to B. Choosing that, obviously the second term here has to be 0. A square minus B square are 0 when A equal B, but this one has to be found the integral which proves the normalization when a equals b in this concern we need to consider a and b to be either zeros of jp of ax or jp of bx respectively or they are not or either one is not now for the equation five which 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 comes from from for equation four obviously we need to decide how this term tend to at the end of the proof to find this one what we do at first we put a goes to zero but b is not going to zero and give it any number Accordingly, equation 5 can be rewritten in this form and we're going to explain our choice of A goes to 0 next. Now, writing up equation 6 again in here and choosing A to be 0 this means that jp of ax is zero. You know, we can imagine that is similar to sine nx, for instance. When n is becomes a zero of sine nx, then sine nx is zero. Now, this is almost similar to that. And when we take the derivative of sine nx, it's going to be n cosine nx. In this case, the result is finite. Similarly here, jp prime of ax is equal to a by j prime p of a. However, having the other limit 1, jp of bx is going to be jp of b. This is almost similar to like cosine mx, for example. If 
you put x equal one and then cosine m is finite and if you take the derivative of cosine m mx for instance is going to be m by sine x and you put x equal to one this will give us zero similarly here j prime p of px equals zero according to this we're going to get this one in this way what's left over from from the numerator according to these conditions j p of p multiplied by a by j prime p of a this obviously divided by p square minus a now what we need to do to avoid the indeterminate of this of the right hand side we're going to apply L'Hopital rule so as we take the derivative of the denominator and the numerator with respect to b and then at the end we need to sub substitute b equal a doing that we'll get this result and this is our proof half j prime p squared of a of course the students can look into the other forms presented at the beginning in equation one by using the recursion relations and find the other answers in the orthogonality in the normalization of uh, as a function.